So, do you want to be a pro hacker? Today we're going to take a deep dive into Hack the Box, arguably the most elite cybersecurity training platform there is. If you're thinking about getting into penetration testing or even just cybersecurity as a professional, you are definitely in the right place. It's been incredible to watch this platform evolve over the past seven or so years I've been using it. I actually reviewed Hack the Box about four years ago when it was still actually on the old platform. But what is it like now? Spoiler alert, it's pretty good. So let's get you started on Hack the Box. This will be a review and a intro into how to use it. So Hack the Box Labs started as a community driven platform focused on learning and improving your penetration testing skills but it never used to be so be beginner friendly. In fact, you used to have to hack your way in to create an account, but now it's grown massively. And also that has become less gatekeepery and accessible. It's growing in content as well to cover more defensive cyber roles like SOC, incident response, threat hunting, and more. Hack the Box is only really focused on red and blue team side, so if you're looking for anything like architecture or GRC, you're not really in the right place. But the depth, especially with pen testing, is huge, with nearly over a thousand labs and challenges you can learn from. So enough yabbing, let's get you started. So this is what you will see on Hack the Box after you register an account. This is relatively new and this is the starting point. These give you a few very, very easy challenges to get started on Hack the Box. So as you can see, we have this new purple category of machine called Very Easy, and it will just basically guide you through how to set up a VM, how to connect to the VPN. You then dive into some very slightly more challenging uh, labs, which will guide you through the whole way on how to basically the platform, as well as learning the penetration test workflow. You then move on to T2, which gets a little bit more tricky with some more hands-on lads, which still guide you through step by step and you learn throughout doing. And also, of course, tier three, where it leaves you a little bit more on your own just to complete the tasks in the lab. But again, these are in what's called a guided mode, where it's asking you these questions every step of the way. And this guides you in the right way to solve the lab. Now, before we get on to what made Hack the Box so special, I do want to jump on what we see here, season six. This is the lifeblood of the Hack the Box community, and this is what really drives people to come back. So traditionally in Hack the Box, machines would rotate, you'd have several weeks to uh, hack into them, gain your points before they'd be retired, and then a new one would come out. Now, this is still the same concept, but now they have localized these into individual seasons. So as you can see, we're having the machines come out, some machines are expired, and we have more still on the way. So this is a fun way of really driving that community involvement to get people more involved on a recurring basis and really just competing with each other. So I mentioned a lot about machines, so just what are they? Well, machines is basically a single instance of a virtual machine which you have to hack into and gain root level or system level privileges of that machine. Now, there is a different exploit path for every single machine that you do, and they all focus on different attack techniques. So this is a really, really great way to get a lot of exposure onto a lot of different systems. Things that you ordinarily wouldn't get in the day-to-day -day as a pen test consultant or of a in-house pen tester. So this will give you that experience that you would really need. So when these projects do come up on an engagement, you would have already had a bit of experience with them. So all of these machines are named something and generally their name is loosely tied to the exploit path. So they've got their general rating, the community graded rating, as well as the hack the box rating, which is specified by the circle around the portrait. And you've got your number of people who have owned the system or have finished it essentially. So if you go into a machine, let's just go into the easiest one for now. And we have the option to spawn the machine. So spawning it will just basically start it. So if you're on VIP like me, you get a private instance of this machine. Now you still have to share it with people on the same VPN, but VIP give you access to a lot more servers with a lot less people on them. So generally, if you're all hacking the machine at the same time, sometimes things can get broken or some artifacts get left behind, making it easier for you. So this is a way just to make sure that there's minimal disruption. If you have a VIP plus subscription, you will have your own dedicated instance. So once we spawn the machine, we get the option to start submitting the user and root flag. So typically all the challenges are divided into those two milestones. The user flag being generally getting a low privilege access onto the dedicated machine. And then root flag being complete total privileges over the entire machine. 
Now, these can be really varied in the way that you go about this and generally doesn't always fit into the same sort of workflow this, the, all of the time. Generally, it can be very different. So now what is also a new feature of Hack the Box VIP or VIP Plus is the ability to use your own Pwn Box. Now, this is really great if you can't install things like OpenVPN onto a work computer, but you have dedicated study time, or you just want to be able to hack on the go through a browser, this is exactly what's for you. So you can start your own phone box where, whenever and almost wherever you like. So they even have servers for me down in Australia, which for a lot of cybersecurity training providers, they don't have. So this is really great. Starting the Pwn box does take a few seconds and it gives me a good opportunity to talk about how much time you get with it. With a normal VIP subscription, you get 24 hours of Pwn box per month. And with the VIP plus it's unlimited. So you can use it as much as you like. Personally, I'm a bit of, I'm a bit more old school. I love the old open VPN connection because I want to bring my entire virtual machine with me. I don't want to uh, use one that's just going to get blown away uh, when I'm done with it. So we can see when the Pwn box has finished, we just open it up and we have our own instance of Parrot Linux in the cloud ready for us to use. And we just start attacking the machines that we're after. So this is really handy, as I mentioned, just to bring your attacking workflow wherever you go. If you're on holidays and you want to get some hacking in, then you've got your laptop. You don't need to connect your whole open VPN connection or anything like that. You don't have to have a fancy computer. You can do it all in the cloud. So I'm a big fan, even though I don't personally like to use it myself. Now, next we have challenges. These are divided into various different uh, categories and they're focused on just completing one small challenge. So not having to enumerate the entire machine and find an exploit path and then privilege escalate or anything like that. We just have one thing to do and one thing only. So this is really great if you want to sharpen your skills in anything from cryptography to forensics to even game hacking, open source intelligence, web pen testing, you name it. There is heaps of challenges here and a whole bunch of retired ones too. Retired ones you can access the solutions for. So if you are stuck and you want to learn how to do it and you've given it all you've got, then you can check the solution. So retired machines are machines that have already completed the full cycle. So they've come out, people have hacked into them, they've gotten the points and now they're no longer active to get points, but you can still spawn them and use them. So each month there's a selection of retired machines available for free users, but VIP have entire, the entire access to the full catalog of retired machines. Now, when it comes to retired machines, the great thing about it is that there are walkthroughs available. This is great if you're just starting out and you really want to try and learn the workflow and you're just finding it a little bit, bit, little bit troublesome after trying every option you have. There was the whole walkflows, walk, walkthroughs section, which had the official write up from Hack the Box, generally a video from IPSEC, and now we have actually the guided mode. So the guided mode really just takes you through a whole step-by-step uh, activity just showing you more so the workflow without giving you the answers. So as you can see here, how many TC port, TCP ports are open on this machine and you just specify a number. That will then take you to the next task which will then ask you another prompting question. So it's not so much giving you the answer but it's, prompt, it's prodding you in the right direction to solve it. So this is now available on every easy and medium level machine. If you're not, not a fan of it, you can still go to advanced mode where you just submit the user and root flags and score your points for completing the machine but no active points. So now it's time to talk about Sherlock's. This is really a new addition, which is taking your defense skills to the next level. And it's great to see Hack the Box are now getting into the defensive side too. So Sherlock's are graded in the same way as the machines and challenges. So you have your very easy, easy, all the way to medium, hard, and insane. And these are in different categories from digital forensics, malware analysis, threat hunting, and much more. So you've really got so much to learn from on the blue team side as well. So I'm a big fan of cross-skilling. So if you want to be a great pen tester, it's always good to learn how to be a good defender so you can learn how to bypass and evade. So going into a Sherlock, typically we have some files to download and it will just guide us through very much similar to the guided mode in the labs, in the machine labs. We go through, we ask, we're asked a few questions and we have to solve that. And then we get our we get our points awarded. Similarly, it also has retired Sherlock's, so ones that have walkthroughs available, but do not award you any active points. So now let's talk about tracks. Tracks is basically a user submitted learning path for you to learn specific topics. So we have things like the Crest CRT preparation, for example. This will this is basically a collection of retired machines, challenges, and Sherlock's for you to learn to prepare those skills. So it will really guide you in the way of what you need to learn to achieve a certain objective. 
So we have tracks for beginners, we have tracks for industrial control systems and SCADA, introduction to Zephyr, which is a pro lab, OWASP top 10, and so much more. Now pro labs isn't included in the free VIP or VIP plus subscription with exception to full house, which is a more or less a little intro into a, a pro lab. Now pro labs, instead of just being a single machine, it is an entire network. So these are really focused towards your red teaming activity. So these are, these pro labs are a place for you to get practice on that. However, they're not included in the subscription. There are also the advanced labs like Fortress, Endgame and Battlegrounds, but these are all kind of older features which look like they're on their way to be retired soon anyway. So now let's talk about rankings. Rankings is what keeps a Hack the Box community alive and thriving. It's a place where people can compete against each other to earn points. So any machine that you you pwn, which is active, will award you those points. But the moment that but the moment that machine is retired, you will then lose those points. So you need to be active and maintain your points to be able to level up in rank. For me, I reached the level of hacker, which is about three ranks up, I think. And even though I haven't been active for a while, I still maintain that rank, even though I have no no active points. Whereas people like me who use this usually service but not super actively, tend to fall by the way, wayside and go further, fall further down in the global rankings. So that is pretty much a overview of the system, but now let's get into pricing. So as I mentioned, there are two VIP levels, there's VIP and VIP Plus. As I mentioned, VIP Plus gives you that personal machine instance for every single machine that you, sh that you spin up, as well as un unlimited pwn box hours, instead of the 24 that you get on the normal VIP. On the normal VIP, you get access to all of the retired machines, all of the retired challenges, 24 hours of the pwn box, the guided mode, isolated VIP servers, and also the ability to submit CPE credits for your continuous learning. So when it comes to choosing what's the right one for you, it really just comes down to, do you want the pwn box or are you happy just using your own VPN? So the price is $14 a month for the VIP and 20 for the VIP plus. I think in most cases the VIP should be sufficient, but there is discount with annual billing as well. But it is important to mention once again, this does not include things like the Hack the Box Academy or it doesn't include things like the Pro Labs as well. This is a separate subscription. So onto the pros and cons. So you get a massive amount of hands-on content with Hack the Box VIP and VIP plus. You'll never run out of things to do. It's got a fun and engaged community, thriving with competition, which will keep you active in the community, active submitting flags, and really active continuously learning. It's great hands-on practice. Everything is, is actually hands-on. You're not answering little quizzes. You are hands-on for the entire time. And it will save, serve you for a long time. I know people who, who started in this industry five or six years ago, and they're still a very active user every single week on this platform. But what's not so good? So the subscriptions and accounts are messy. You have different subscription options for VIP, VIP Plus, Pro Labs, Academy, and different accounts for all of those services too. So bringing all of this together would be a great step in the right direction. And personally, I feel like if you subscribe to a Pro Lab, you should get VIP for free as well. I'm also not a fan of the separation between VIP and VIP Plus, and I hope they can simplify that in the future as well. It is still not the best place for beginners. Even though they have their starting point, which is great, it still has a little bit of a learning gap, a little bit of a steep learning curve there for newbies to learn, but it's not insurmountable. So if you're up for a challenge, then it's still a good place to go. And even though they are working on it, I still think more blue content could be needed. I'd love to see blue team labs and just like what we have with the attack labs and being able to gain points and up the rankings that way beyond just the Sherlock's. So the bottom line, Hack the Box is the definitive platform for penetration testers once they've hit a baseline competency. It provides endless challenging machines and on an ongoing basis, which is really, which is also supplemented by a huge amount of challenges and Sherlock's. The community is vibrant, active, competitive, helpful, fun, and it's just really a great place to be if you want to be involved in the pen test community. My suggestion for them to improve is simplify their accounts and pricing and value along with ex the expansion of blue team content. And this will cement Hack the Box as a de definitive cybersecurity education platform. So thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a comment below and let me know what you like about Hack the Box. Leave a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, subscribe if you're new here, and I'll catch you in the next one.